Welcome to Seven Trumpets Prepper, and in part two of this series that we're doing on wind power, we're going to show you in this video how to begin your utility conduit pipe and wire in your outside disconnect. So with that said, let's take a look at it now. Now at this portion in the build, what we're going to do now is we're going to take some marking paint that is made for this specific purpose, and we're going to mark out the trail for our utility conduit to go into the ground. Now always make certain that your utility companies, if you have any other uh, wiring or any water or etc. or propane lines, you need to make certain and call your local utility company and have those marked out carefully should you choose to dig your own trench work. And not only that, but it's a great courtesy to do for those of you out there that are going to have uh, someone come and pay them to do it for you. It saves them a lot of heartache as well. So we're going to mark this now and show you what it looks like. Now at this point we have marked our trail for where that the utility will go into the structure and then we'll come down here and make a turn and go back down to the turbine. Now utility conduit is pretty long and as long as you work with the smaller pieces you can easily flex it into the ground but you don't want to overstress your conduit so it's important to take as straight a trail as you can and now understand though that you can bend it it does have some flex to it but you never want to take sharp turns this right here a elbow will be used right here and that will be dug out carefully which we'll show here further in the presentation but always make sure to keep as straight a path as possible for your piping and this reduces all the stress on it because you don't want that to crack and then your cable become contaminated or damaged Now that the structure has the trenching drilled out to it, now what we can do is lay out our utility conduit to make sure that we have enough pieces and you always want to make sure to give you some excess length because it's better to have more and not need it than need it and not have it and that's another trip to a supply warehouse. Now what we've also done is got some more commercial contractor cord that is 12-3 and we're going to cut the ends off of it because what's something that most people don't take into fact is that the ends are fused for 15 amp. Now the cable can take more and that's uh, what we're going to use this for is we're going to hope to get 30 amps out of this. Now please keep in mind that all wire is rated differently so you need to be careful when selecting your uh, cord and make sure that it's up to the standards in which your local electric company requires if you plan on tying in to the power grid. Okay, we're now going to take this 125 amp outdoor exterior box that has four spaces, eight circuits on it, and we're going to take and mount it to this Schedule 80 utility conduit pipe, and we're going to have it as the upright holding this box because that's all it's going to have to support, and we're going to concrete that pipe into place, and we're going to fill the pipe with some concrete down into the base and then we'll put a, a, a cap on the end of the pipe to keep rain from getting into it. Now, what we're going to do at that point, once that's concreted in, is connect the wind turbine from part one that we've already shown you how to install into this 125 amp hour box. Then from there, we'll run it down the utility conduit. Now one quick note to make is before that we begin the wiring of the 125 amp hour box is we've already partially started our conduit down the trench line about two to three sections and what that'll do is that'll help hold your conduit in place like you need it so that you can concrete it in and you can have a free hand to hold your other pipe that is going to hold and support your disconnect box.
now that we have our conduit pipe put into place, we're now going to take and start putting the wiring together on our outdoor breaker box. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this panel off, knock out the notches for our three breakers to go at the top and three at the bottom. This one's going to be for the brake mode. This one here is going to actually just let the power either pass through to the house or stop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this panel off, I'm going to wire the breakers together and then I'll show you how they're wired and then all that will be left is to bring the power in from the turbine into this and wire in with the breaker and then of course the wire going out. So first I'll show you the preliminary wiring that we'll have in place and then I'll show you the wiring once that we've got it mounted onto the mount and got the utility conduit coming in. Now what we have first is we've put our lid on the top because we're not having this come in from a service area and while I have this here at the work table I have already taken the components out of the switch box because what we're going to do is we have modified this so that the power will come in from the turbine to here and what this is for is three wires will come together here and when you pull this forward this will short the motor out causing it to go into a brake mode now what we have done has left a area where that we can ground this box out because what we're going to do just in case lightning ran in is we're going to have this grounded out and also we're going to install a grounding rod and connect it to the wind turbine pole once that we are done with this box. Okay now the first step we done after removing the hardware is that we glued these three breakers together. Now the reason that I've done that is because what we're going to do is we're going to run the wire up through these holes and I also had to modify this a little bit uh, and make a hole there so the wire would come up and we will stick the three pieces of three phase wire into that so we've got our three pieces of wire that we will run up into that breaker that I'll show you in just a moment okay so we have our first component done on this we have the first three breakers um, that's going to be where the wire comes in from the turbine itself have this uh, zip tied together for the moment so that the glue dries to hold the three breakers together and to uh, hold it in place as it glues onto the platform. Now what we've done is the wire is coming underneath. I'm going to let that continue to dry. And right here, this is the connector that we used. And what I've done is I've just pushed them up into there. Uh, obviously trimmed off the excess right here. And then I have put the electrical uh, liquid tape on that and so what we'll do is this will be the power that will go to short the turbine out and put it into brake mode. So we'll install that in just a moment and then I'll put all this back into the box and you'll see it how that it should go. Okay now that we have installed all the components back in the box what we have really done in short is took a single phase box and convert it over for three phase as a multi-pole switch box. Now what we've done is the first three breakers are for power going to the house. So one breaker set always needs to be opposite to the other and I'll get to this in just a moment. This is to go into the house. This is to short the turbine out and put it into brake mode. So I put an example together and then I'll actually show it on the pole outside and in its permanent location with all the wiring in it right before I shut the lid on it for good. But for the moment, and have a little classroom here, is you've got the three phase coming in, and it is gonna go to this breaker on these three uh, ends, and right here on these three leads. And what will happen is, is you'll just bring the power into this first set of breaker, and then bring three jumper wires over to this. Now I'll come back to this in a minute. Where that you have the power coming in, you flip the breaker on. Well, these three wires that are coming out uh, away from the, the system it, over to the side is going to go to the other wiring that's going down into our utility conduit into the house. So there you go, on or off. You either have power going to the house or off. Simple enough, right? Okay, well the jumper that comes over to here, once you turn this off, you still have power on this side from the turbine. So guess what this is for? You bet. You flip that on and that shorts it out to this bar right here and puts it into brake mode. Now this is a really simple way of just converting a single phase box into a three phase uh, setup. Now most electric companies only care about um, being able to disconnect the power from the turbine into the house 
and locking the box. This meets that criteria and the box is UL listed. Now we have done some conversion in it. If you don't want to have issues with the engineering department at your electric company, my best advice is just get a three-phase box that is a multi-pole disconnect. You know, it has three different options. You either have power going in on one pole, you pull down again, it just disconnects it. I took this option because the parts were very readily available at my local uh, hardware store. And So anyway, there's the setup and we'll get this mounted on the pole. You'll see all the, the final wiring on it and then we'll close it for good. Okay, now we have our unit mounted onto the pole outside of the structure. Now what I've done is I've tried to simplify this wiring diagram uh, on the thing itself because I've rode it on the power cord here. You have your line coming in, as I said in the beginning, that hits these three terminals and then it has the jumper that jumpers off to these three terminals. That wire comes underneath there on your pins. Each of these pins you put in, it runs under the board over to here and it shorts it out. So therefore now the unit is in brake mode right now while we're doing construction. Up here though, where the power does come into the module, once that's turned on, that lets power feed here to the line that's going out. And that's it. Very simple wiring. Uh, just keep in mind that you need to check with your electric company should you choose to do this to save money uh, having to pay for a, a very expensive multi-pole uh, box. And now what we'll do now is we'll install our panel to cover this and mount the screws in place. But pretty much it's very simple. Break your own. It transfers when it's off. It doesn't. Brake mode when this is on. It'll stop the turbine from spinning. When it's off, it's free spinning. And right here, just never have both breakers on at the same time. Never engage brake mode in high winds or when turbine is spinning in operation. And for brake mode, always turn off power production breaker first before engaging. And that's it. That pretty much solves that. And you have a simple outdoor disconnect box now for your wind turbine. Now once you've finished wiring your outside disconnect unit, at this point, all that needs to be done is to close the closure on the box and secure it so that it cannot be tampered with. At this point, now you have an easily accessible service point for your wind turbine outside of your structure. In part three of this series, we're going to continue forward showing you how to install your utility conduit into your structure and start it on the inside. With that said, I hope this series has been a help to you so far, and until we see you in part three, I hope you have a most blessed day in Yahushua name.